Indeed. Yo! What it do, St. Louis? It's 7 o'clock. It's Tuesday. So yeah, I know what that means. It is time for the St. Louis Hustle Podcast with yours truly, Cortez Hustle, and my girl, Michelle. Hey! Man, today hey. we got a wonderful show for you. Wonderful. We're talking about how your past could be holding you back. And speaking of past, we also going to throw in some of our past successes. Man, we had a wonderful time in 2020 doing the show. So we've got some moments from our top 10 highest viewed shows. So we want to say thank you to y'all for helping us bring the St. Louis Hustle podcast to life. So thank you, thank you, thank you so, so very much. Uh, so uh, uh, we, uh, to delay, we got a lot to share with uh, you guys. Uh, Cortez. Yes. Hi, I'm sorry. Um, my camera is cricket, and that's how you say cricket because that's how we say it in the hood. And so I just want to take a moment for, with the people to get myself together. I, now don't judge me, Saints, because uh, what had happened that's was is a, a flip. But is it there? Am I there? Boom. There you go. Still. Boom. All right. So we're gonna officially yes. start the show. And so y'all keep it locked right here, man. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy. And most say, if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs and apparel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city? Or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. Hustle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, guess who got caught tripping, not being ready for the shit to come back oh, yeah. free? Uh, My uh, bad. What gave it away? Was it this? <laughs> was it that that gave it away? Was it the look? Yeah. I don't yeah, have the poll. Yeah, tuning in to St. Louis House Podcast. I'm your host, Cortez So That's my girl, Michelle A. Hey. And we're coming to you live and direct from the Monetize My Life studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Your boy has launched a digital marketing do? mastermind mm. what does that mean michelle that what means does that mean if you have a product or service mm -hmm. and you're trying to get more eyeballs on that using digital marketing like social media like youtube like uh other internet platforms like hey podcasting maybe you want to sponsor the show uh those sorts of things maybe. do you want to build a bigger better more robust personal maybe. brand maybe. well guess what bust. for 27 dollars per month as a founding bust. member of this mastermind you'll get mm. a digital marketing course every month you'll get a group training session for two <gasps> hours on digital marketing on a specific subject every month you get a one-on-one -on -one every month with our top one of our top mm. marketing coaches to mm. help mm. you really explode your brand. So all you gotta explode. do is comment I explode. mastermind yeah. in the comments, and somebody Oof. from the team will reach out to you to see if what you got going on is a good mm -hmm. fit and if we can actually help you. Because I don't want to sell you something if I can't help you. So we need to do a little interview or a fact-finding session and <laughs> That's how we will roll, ladies and gentlemen. So, That's how you do it. Chalet, how was your weekend, sir? That's my name. Okay, so there's a couple things going on. First of all, bigger, better, more robust business. What if I'm robust enough? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes <laughs> not everybody want to be bigger. <sighs> okay, that's that's all right though. You yeah, still we get want, the. We want a bigger, better, more robust brand. That, right. Us, right. That's that's not a bigger, we, better, more robust backside, or well, a bigger, better, more, more robust. Bad at rack. It. Well, some some of y'all might want a bigger, better, more robust rack. Uh, but you go to the doctor for that. You don't got to be robust in your physical to have a yes. robust personal brand. 
Got, so how does one, if I'm a person like me, because I'm a person like me, coincidentally, how can you help a person like me brand all of this, all of this wonderfulness? Hey, how listen, do you help brand that? It People want to know. Simple, Michelle, okay. you mm -hmm. are one of the most talented people yeah, that you I actually say know you on this planet. That. So what we would do is identify Me. which one of those talents you want to package and present to the marketplace. I got Once to spin the wheel to pick one. Which one of those talents you want to package and print, present mm. to the marketplace. We'll also identify who's most likely to want to buy that product. And Whoa. then we'll show you how to consistently and mm -hmm. constantly get in front of those people with your message so they get to know who okay. you are, what you do, mm -hmm. why you do it, and uh -huh. how, most importantly, you can help them. That's what our digital okay. marketing process is all about. So well, that was your mouth. That what you need. That gonna help. That's what the people wanted to know. I was asking for a friend. The all people right. wanted right. to know. That's all right, right there. Let's uh, the weekend real quick. Uh, learn some things over the weekend. Uh, first thing I learned was, uh, man, don't don't burn. You could burn popcorn at work. You better work if somebody was doing popcorn in the microwave mm -hmm. and they burn it, and the whole office be stank. Yeah. Don't do it at home. Don't do it at home. Like there's no escape. It's like there. So your clothes, you walk around, you know, kill out your perfume. They're like, why you smell like burnt popcorn? Hey, hey, don't judge me. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing I learned over the weekend. Uh, I spent the whole weekend in the house this weekend watching TV. Didn't really do anything. Um, mm -hmm. Those of y'all that know me know that this is not my time of the year. Winter time when it's all yucky and gray and I got no time for that. Matter of fact, I spent time thinking about where I'm going to move to because the jig is up. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so I did that over the weekend. And uh, oh, last thing. I did watch a really interesting movie over the weekend. Um, it was Intruder with Megan Good and Michael Ely, right? Mm -hmm. The light-skinned brother with the, with the funny ass. He always yeah. played play like a psychopath. And, and um I discovered this is probably why I don't get a lot of dates. And when I did get dates, we didn't go to the movies. Because even at home, I'm yelling at the TV. <laughs> I'm yelling at the TV. She did some stupid stuff. I'm like, listen here, you're finna get, you're finna get cut up. This yeah. is not what black people do in the movies. She did all the telltale things that we don't do. I said, somebody else wrote that. Because you ain't probably doing that. So He's still on the property. He's, he, he's, he's around here somewhere. He's about to pop out, lady. Listen, he's about to pop out. And she's still inviting him. You mean to come in? What the? Who invites the creepy dude in their house? You just keep doing it over and over again. And then your man had told you stop doing that. Yeah. Come on. It, it just took me hey, I don't want this dude around. Right. Can you please respect my wishes. Oh, man. Oh, he's harmless. But, oh, my God. Yeah, he was harmless. So. Mm, okay. Done with that. Uh, let's jump into these COVID numbers. Oh, real quick. Well, yeah, good. we'll do the COVID numbers and then we're going to slide on into this this capital thing just super quick. We're going to spend a lot of time on it. Although, I almost feel like we should do a show about it because it's it's a lot of foolishness going on in Americas mm -hmm. with an S. Yeah. We act up. We Americas. We clowning. So, um, COVID numbers, Missouri, we're at 453. And Illinois, 1.4 mil. Ooh. 1.4 mil. I kept checking the numbers like, how I get to a million? That do come after 900,000, but you know, <laughs> sometimes you forget. You know, they you just didn't see it. In Illinois. They got the end, 1.4. And then so, I, you know, I normally try to say, okay, oh, we're up this much, so uh, Missouri we're up 25,000. Illinois, I just put y'all up a lot. Y'all into the millions. I really don't think it matter how much y'all are up. You could have been up two points, but you're into the millions. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So um, wear a mask. Stay safe. Um, they got us back out here. They lifted some of the stuff that they had us under. And so we can now go back out and eat at restaurants and, you know, small numbers. But wear a mask, people. They say there's another strand or something that's come out that's even stronger than the first one. And um, one of my employees, two of my employees so far have had. COVID. Yeah. So um, yeah. it, it's, it's a real thing. Butt, it knocks you on your butt. It, um, it really, really and, does. Uh, I don't know if you, you guys know? heard, but um, 
I think Biden said the first thing he's going to do when he gets in office is shut the country down for 100 days. What? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. We don't want yeah. whales. I, I, I heard that over the weekend. I'm like, man, I, mm. I hadn't heard it. So I, I wanted to go look it up. But yeah, I heard it from a, wow. a reputable source. Biden said one of the first mm. things he's going to do. Uh, of course, he's thinking that that's what 45 should have done. It's like, hey, stop playing and, and all this. Shut the country down. Mm. Let this thing die down, and then slowly right. run back up. So the next hundred days, uh, you guys are gonna be quarantined. Just talk but you, but that never what happened in March. I mean, because then we be shut down from March to May. You know, yeah. I mean, folks are still going to the grocery store. Folks like me was going to Quick Trip. Hey, <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying? But so we were we really can they really shut us down 100? percent No, because for, uh, essential workers need to be essential. So yeah. there's only so much they can do. Yeah, but um, I, I think I think when you think about a hundred days, though, that's three months, right? And yeah. I think if we Take look at me. that on the outset and say, okay, the next hundred days to get this thing under control, um, that's one thing. But to say, hey, country is shut down indefinitely, and then yeah. when the revenue yeah, changes, yeah. like, hey, country, open back up. It's like, no. We're sticking to our guns. The country is shut down for yes. the next 100 days. Deal with it. Wow. Right? I think that's right. a different approach than, wow. hey, we shut down. We don't know when we're going to open back up. But as soon as the money wow. gets like, uh, we open up right now. Uh, right. <laughs> now seems like a real good time. A real good time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I don't I don't know. Uh that was that was rough for me. You you know that was rough for yeah. me. Um, yeah. so I, I don't know if I want to go through that again. I, you have no choice, you just kind of deal with it. But um, you know, we'll see what they're gonna do. I, I need to get my toilet paper now, look like <laughs> right. all butt wiping people, all the people wiping butts and not really wiping butts. Y'all just getting it to look at because the way some folks smell, you know they ain't wiping their ass. But <laughs> They blood tax. So, anywho, um, and then real quick, just to touch on it, the stuff that's going on with the Capitol, um, just there's it's so chunk full of seriousness and funny stuff at the same time. Um, and the, the biggest thing that everyone is pointing out is if there had been a bunch of black folks that stormed the Capitol, we wouldn't have made it past the third step. We'd be like, get up, pow, pow, we've been gone. Yeah. It, it just wouldn't have been that far. And then they're in whooping cops' ass, like. How does that happen? I mean, yeah, they was overpowered, but there was a lot more people in the rallies and the marches that we had than what was down there. We, ain't, we wasn't whooping cops. Now, we were throwing stuff at them because yeah. that's kind of what we do, fireworks and stuff, but we wasn't whooping them. Boy, the white folk went crazy. They were beating them with the flagpoles and fire yeah. extinguishers and ain't nobody. The people that did get shot probably, well, I can't say that. I'm going to say it. Sorry, Lord. Probably one of the ones that should have got shot. There were some real ivory ones there, the ones that kind of got that thing kicked off. The, the you know, that was really bringing the fire. Yeah, you're right, right about that. Yes. And we we don't like to address that. Uh, but here's here, here's the difference between white Americans and black Americans, especially black, brown and other minorities is mm -hmm. white Americans know they own this country and they know. Yeah that the public service officials work for them, yep. right? And when you think about how police forces came into be and into power, they mm -hmm. are the evolution of the um, slave catchers, right? Yeah, and they wow. were there to protect the slave owner's property. Well, mm -hmm. if I'm an owner, I know that the people I hire to protect my property ain't gonna kill mm -hmm. me. Even right. if I do something as tyrannous as storming the Capitol, right? That's so crazy. But us being on the other side and you and coming from the perspective that we used to be property, mm -hmm. right? The police force see us as, hey, you're destroying the property of the owner. You're a threat to destroying the property of the real mm. owners of this country. And my job is to protect the owner's property. Right. So that's, that's a whole different thing. And what I, 
what, what the, the part that I really didn't like, Michelle, I saw some people on social media making like like Kevin Hart posted right, right. this kind of scenario. If that was us. And there's a lot of white people saying they, they still don't get it. They still don't get it. And I'm like, yeah. how do you not see yeah. the blatant difference and yeah. how things are handled? And they said that was not a race thing. They showed the one black <sighs> yep. running up the steps from yep. the crowd. Yep. Why is he running? Because most of the people in that crowd coming up those steps were white. He no good. Damn, no all of them. He cannot take his billy club and go upside the head of mm -hmm. a white person in this country being a black police officer, even though he's enforcing the law. Right, right, he can't right. Because they, yeah, yeah. they look at the the for a moment. He cannot swing on an owner. And he was like, get back, get back. And they were like, dude, I wish you would. <laughs> well, I was like, who is this? Who, somebody get their uncle. Come and on, he ran and, his butt up them steps, and it yeah. wasn't. And, and and it wasn't like th there was. Of course, he was outnumbered, but right. that wasn't the thing. Mm -hmm. The thing was, if I hit this white person with this billy club, even in protection of the country, I could still lose my job for this. I could still get sued in a civil suit for this. Even though I'm doing my job, go a step further with that though. Realistically, it was a, a lot of them and one of him. His mind also had to think: if I hit one, the rest of these jokers are gonna probably over. They're gonna overtake them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can whoop yeah. one person with one stick, but you can't whoop twelve with one stick. Not for too true. long. That's you know true. what I'm saying? And so that might have been that fight or flight moment. That sometimes people have. I'm so off with my camera being on this side. I'm like, where do I look? Where do I look? Um, but but that fight or flight had to kick in where I want to hit that. I want to bust this joker's head. However, it's about 12 of them back there. That if I bust his head to the white me, they're going to probably, I don't think he wanted that pain. He might have thought that, oh, losing my job and all of that. But I think it was more survival. You know, and then they're painting him on the news. Hey, I give, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? They say he saved the the, the chamber, whatever, you know, because he led them away from there. I think he ran up the steps and was like, that hallway too long. I was going to go this way. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, he's a hero. No, yeah, he just made a good day. I'm my place in this whole situation. I'm top flight security. I got to <laughs> He was like, I need to get out of here quickly. That's a long hallway. It looked like it's closed off. He was like, because he was going to go down that hallway. And he was yeah. like, they're like, oh, he sees that that's where the city, where the uh, floor is. And he didn't want to lead him down there. So he purposely taunted him to go the other way. And I, I think, I don't know if that was the intention. I think that's what he got credit for. And catch me down here. But right. and, and then also, he knew where the rest of the backup was. No. Thank you. The rest of the troops is up there. Thank I'm you. Going up there. I, thank you. I, and like I said, I, I wouldn't want to be in that scenario. Um, yeah. it, it just is it's super crazy. It makes you wonder what our country is coming to, which we kind of already know. Some things have to happen uh, just to just because of biblical prophecy. Some things have to happen. And yeah. it is what it is. I, I woke up this morning with a heavy spirit. I woke up praying this morning and. I went to a whole another place in worship this morning because of all of that foolishness was just playing on the news in my sleep. And I woke up and God was like, you know what you got to do. So yeah. anywho, um, that's that's uh, that's our country. Um, your president is like, I am. He like Jennifer Holiday. <laughs> I'm staying. <laughs> hey, you go love me. Uh, he ain't going. He's like, hey, yeah, I'm not going to the inaugural inaugural. It. He ain't going to the party. Uh, yeah. He yeah. want to celebrate. Mike Pence said he gonna go, but eh, I mean, I ain't, shaking, I ain't shaking that dude with him, man. You, you, you really want to do that? <laughs> you right, like, right. He's like, he said, "I am not passing the baton. I'm dropping the baton on the floor, and he can pick it up if he wants." <laughs> you look. They shut his Twitter down. They was like, "You went ballistic." I can't Twitter. What? Well, I just go to Facebook. Facebook was like, "Mm mm." <laughs> he couldn't even get on TikTok. 
Oh, remember you was trying to shut us down. I know you don't think we fit right. up. Yeah, right. they shut you us down. You not get a, an account on. You didn't want to let us in your country. Now you want to thank account. you, please. Yeah, thank you. No, they're not doing that. So, anywho, um, yeah. So that's 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 kind of the wrap up for this morning. Um, I'm excited and about this this, this show. Morning. This morning, this morning. Over watch was brought to you by ah. That could be you. I'm just saying, y'all can sponsor the show at any uh, given right. time. You can sponsor right. the COVID watch by Michelle. Mm. Hey, I'm just saying. Uh, right. I see Integrity Well Solutions talking about road tide. Man, get out of here. Don't like care about oh. Alabama winning yet another championship. Oh. They should win championships oh. when they got all NFL players on their team. Uh, I'm just uh, they, they uh, uh, no, I'm messing with you, uh, Janelle. Uh, LaDonna says yeah. hello. Uh, Melissa is in the building and says hello. Guys, guys, go ahead and comment in the chat where you're from. Drop the name of your business and all your brand. If you like it, free shout out. Just don't put any links in the comments. We got a question for you guys today. Have you ever allowed your past to mm. hold you back? Chat. Have you ever allowed your past to hold you back? There's mm. a thing in when you're in the personal growth and self-development space and, and you're trying to change your life and all that stuff. You know what they say, Michelle? There is a reason that yeah. the windshield is mm. eight times bigger than the rear Than the rear view. I say that thing again. <laughs> say that again. Yes, I've heard that and I believe it to be true. I believe so it to be true. If you... Um, have ever let your past hold you back? And how did you get over it? How did you end yeah. it? Michelle has got some great tips for you guys today on tips. specifically tips. that. So mm -hmm. take away, sis. Oh, no, no, that's me. Be like, y'all want me on program? I ain't know who was doing that now. Okay. Um, I think, here's the thing. I, we're going to get here. But I think that I think that y'all, that the viewers are friends. I think they particularly like my messiness, my wretchedness. I think they like my uh, my craziness. I think they like that I'll be prepared all the time. I think if I was always prepared all the time, that I would be prepared all the time. There'd just be no fun. I think they like it when I players mess up, and I think they like that. And so you're <laughs> welcome, St. Louis. You're welcome. So yeah, yeah. That's I just want to make that little PSA. When I be messing <laughs> up, it's for y'all. You welcome. Okay, so um, ways, um, seven signs that your past is holding you back. How do you really know? Got to be able to self-identify, people. Also, yep. stay here with us because we're also going to be mixing in the uh, top 10 shows, right? Top 10 best shows from 2020. Well, so let's, because I'm in the past. See, I just did that. Um, yep. You constantly talk about the past and about how things used to be. Lord have mercy. Everybody has that person to be like, well, what we used to do was, well, back then we used to. Yeah. And you're trying to get someone to go forward and do something new, but all they can do is tell you what they used to do or who they used to be. That That's a sign. If you, if you only refer to what you used to do and you don't really have a grasp of what you're going to do, that's probably the biggest telltale sign that you got some problems letting go of the past. Of, you know, of the past. And, and it is not the problem. And we're not saying you have to let go of your past. Mm. What we're saying is you can't live there. Right. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are big fans of the show Friends. Right. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the show, but I've seen it. Right. In one particular episode, Monica had a crush on this guy when she was in high school. And mm. it was it, it was the funniest thing. This is probably the funniest little line I've heard in TV, right? Mm. She had a crush on this guy in high school, Chip, because he was fly. He had the leather jacket. He rode mm. a motorcycle to school. She was like, he the flyest thing ever. Mm. Fast forward. Sound like Fonzie. 10 years, 15 years into the future. Now they're grown, doing their thing. She runs into Chip. And now mm. Chip want to give her a shot. He didn't want to see her in high school, but mm. he want to give mm. her a shot today. So Been there. he goes Been there. out with Chip. And 10 years out of high school, Chip is still riding the same motorcycle. <laughs> Chip is still wearing the same bomber jacket. And mm. uh, 
she said something about his name and and he was he was like you know uh, uh, yes yeah, chip and he's like he said no they call me chip she said you can't get him to stop <laughs> Nick, what, you grown now what, what's your name what's your real name that uh, wasn't his real name but no that was not his real name but he wanted them to call her him, him chip because he wanted he was living in see chip was the man the persona that he created and i got school. you so he wanted to be that and when mm. she came back off the date she was like man Chip is still a senior in high school. Right, right. <laughs> so that's all he talked about on the date. Hey, wow. You know, I did this in that game. And wow. man, when I tell you, I know some yep. that you, every time I mm -hmm. see them, boy, I was cold back in high school. Man. Boy, I was getting thought. money during this period in my life. Back in the day. <laughs> and, you know, it's okay to revisit your past. Just don't live there, y'all. Thank you. That That's so big because there are people who don't feel as if they can face their future. There's a lot of fear. The root cause and analysis is fear. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if Melissa's still on, but I would love for her to chime in on some of this. Uh, Melissa Wilson, uh, certified official life coach. Uh, sure, she deals life with coach. certified life coach. life coach. She deals with this sort of thing all the time. Um, that leads us into the point number two, um, when you're afraid of change, right? That is definitely a sign that you're not letting go of the past. You don't want to change what you used to do. I've been doing this for 20 years. It's been working, sort of. And why I do something new? That's where it's all right. No, it's not all right. It just and really quickly, um, back at well this point and the first point how do you get beyond that right and so uh the study that i was reading they say that again it's rooted in fear and affirmation positive affirmation is a way that you can get past a lot of this you know yeah. you have to face your fears which can be scary but you have to make those positive affirmations i will have a successful future i'm not afraid of change i can meet whatever is coming at me you know, and even if it's in baby steps, it will propel you slowly but surely to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, staying stuck in one place is just it may seem comfortable, but you'll become stagnant and you may seem like you're OK, but the rest of the world is moving on around you. And it's not yeah. a good place to be. It's it, just not it, a good place not. to be. And there's three reason or uh, three primary ways that I figured out how to create change in my life. And mm -hmm. you can do this over time because there's three main reasons that you are who you are. Mm -hmm. Places you go. Yep. I agree. The content you consume. Okay. And the people you associate with the most. Yeah. If you yeah. want to change, change one or all three of those variables. If you want the most rapid change, the most impact if you if you if you sick and tired of being sick and tired and you, you need that immediate change change right. all three if you want a gradual that's, change change at least one of the three that's scary i i i, 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 I can't get it out that's how scary it is <laughs> I, i've changed a lot of uh things over the last year and people, places, and I have some places I ain't changed. Sorry, Lord, I'm working on it. <laughs> but people and things, there are some things in that, those other two categories that I've changed dramatically. And, you know, I hold on to, you know, maybe two people that's close to me, but the rest have kind of dwindled away. And it's a scary thing because it does change. You know, I went from, I'm going to say it, I went from being this party girl, right? I went from being the person that everybody called on Friday night, like, Shell, what's good? What are you doing? Where you at? Where we going? Um, I went from being that to being a person that um, goes out by herself most times. Yeah. You know, I have yeah. a couple people I can, if I just wanted to hang with somebody, but I spend 90% of my time by myself. And I think it's for, it's definitely for a reason. I know it's not permanent, but for me, that's the change that needed to, that I believe I needed to move forward. Right. Yeah. Um, because as long as I was around a bunch of people, we was doing the same thing. You know, and if I look back 10 years, we were doing the same thing in recent years that we was doing 10, 15 years ago. You know, yeah. and, and that's not Man. that's not change and it's not success. You, I won't yeah. see success that way. 
So. I got a guy in my life that I love to death. And when I saw him towards birthday, mm-hmm. I asked him, man, what's pop? What you what you gonna do this year? You already know we crossing them waters, cuz. <laughs> and the year before that, hell, didn't you do that last weekend? <laughs> <laughs> they tired of seeing you. They called me and told me to tell you, don't come back in the ball. And, and last thing before we move on to this point, I'm gonna give you my my our top ten and top nine highest rated shows that you guys like. So we're gonna bring some of these topics back to you this year. But yeah. one of the reasons, Michelle, one of the hardest things is not easy, and it's not as hard to change your content that you consume. Mm-hmm. It's not as hard to change the places that you go. One of the right. hardest things to do is change the people that you associate with. And here's why. Yeah. And I want to help you guys with this so that you can make this transition, so you can let this. Mm. Go. The Set us free. Hard for us mm. to change the people we associate with because some of those people have mm. seen us through the darkest moments of our lives. Yeah. And we feel like we owe them. Right? And Say that. that's why when we start to elevate, when we start to grow, we want Come them. On. To grow go, go. with us, you want to go with us. Want to sever the ties. It's like, man, this person helped me through that divorce. This person, when my boyfriend, my girlfriend was going upside my head, this was the only person I can run to for safety. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Here's what you do. Here, here's how you do it. Because you should never let your growth stop for anybody, or in my Madea voice, anybody. Right? Here's what you do. Wow. All you have to do is make sure that you keep an open invitation for them to grow with you. See, all of my yeah. homeboys that I ran with, that I was selling drugs with on the street corners of Wellston, all of them know that there is an so open is. invitation for mm-hmm. them to come rock with me on this level. Right. Yeah. Let them believe. I ain't stopping for none of them. Yeah, that's it. But there's an open invitation. And that's it. If you guys that's want to come, remember, people are in your life for a season. Mm. Are in your life for a lifetime. So mm. that season, God put them in your life, was mm-hmm. to get that bad divorce. There it is. There it is. And guess what? Mm. You bless them in a way in that season too. So really, y'all even. Right. You know, I tell people when they try to throw stuff in my face, like, I did such and such for you. I say, I, I, God used you to do such and such for me. So what you need to do is give God glory for uh, using you, okay? <laughs> but you ain't gonna steal that glory from God. God did that. He used you to do it, you know? You just made me think, though, Cortez. You made a turn that you made. You're at where you're at, right? But one thing I think that some people kind of miss it, how to identify when you need to let go of people. How do you identify? Or how do you identify who to let go of, right? And so um, I'm gonna say it, but it takes a person, you have to really, really examine yourself and it's not pretty. It ain't pretty because what you just said comes into play, but they did this and we did that. You have to examine the you that you are currently versus the you that you were in the past Mm-hmm. versus the you that you want to be, you know, prayerfully folk, you know, I'll be praying for the people prayerfully, you know what your purpose is. You have an idea of what your purpose is. If you're grown, if you ain't get on your knees anyway, but you, you know, okay, I was meant to do this. I feel like this is my calling. So if you know that and you share that with those people and they're not embracing the positive mm-hmm. God sent you, but they want to keep you tied to the old you, that's kind of your deciding right there because you know that, you know, God says in Jeremiah, oh, won't God do it? 29 and 11. <laughs> His plans. I know the plans I have for you, which are to prosper you, right? Give you a future. So you know that if God has called you to do certain things, that's going to be a good thing. But if those new people can't latch on to the new you and they want to keep you being the old you, you might need to let them go because they're holding you to your past. They want you to keep being who you used to be. There were people in my past that wanted me to stay good time shell. They wanted me to stay fun shell. 
hell, sometimes I want to be the state fun shit. <laughs> but I had to learn that if I ever wanted to embrace what I know God had for me and my future, um, I can't be both. Right. And and I have my moments. I ain't all the way there yet. And just because someone wanted me to stay back there it doesn't mean that they bad. It just means that they were a part of my past and maybe not a part of my future. And that's a hard thing to deal with. You still love them. You still pray for them. You don't act all self-righteous, but you have. And I'm not better than anyone. I just realized the call on my life. And and it kind of is what it is. But I, I, I challenge you guys to to do that, you know, especially if you're in conflict about relationships. That's a good way to sort them out. Who want the new you and who want the old you? You know, I got a few, too, that embrace my newness, that encourage me. All the other ones that I used to hang with, they didn't want that. So I had to leave them where they be. So yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Listen, man, y'all heard from Church mm. Lady Shell scripture of the day. Yeah. And put it in the comment. Mm. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Uh, I was going to give them a free vacation uh, and if they could have uh, recalled it. Now you didn't uh, say it to them twice. Now everybody they ain't going to remember. They ain't going to get the free vacation, y'all. We all going on a trip. Let's come on. Let's, oh, we so, going on a trip. Okay. Real quick, before we go to break and before we get to number three on the list of how to overcome your past. And our uh, top 10. Our top 10 shows from 2020. Number 10 was a show we did on Money Matters, right? And that's that's in the hip hop world. That's called, Michelle, a double entendre. Right. Yeah. When, you, when you are a lyricist, your whole thing is to try to figure out how many double entendres can you get into 16 bars. Right. Oh, that was. Entendre says money matters can be used in two different ways. And mm. the context works in both ways. Look so at God. When we say mm. money matters. We're talking about your money matters, man. What's going on with your money? Mm. Also say money matters. How does money matter to you? What does it mean to you? Mm. It actually matters. So that's what that show was. We had a great time doing it. You guys liked it. So that was our 10th highest viewed show. Our ninth highest viewed show. We had some special guests (laughs) on with us. We did a show on co-parenting. And y'all went crazy. Right? Crazy for it. It was fun for me because I got to watch Shelly and her baby daddy and another couple Ugh. talk a little bit about yeah. life as baby mom and baby daddy. <laughs> so Interesting. Was- and no blood was shed. No no baby daddies died during the taping of that show. Let's go. <laughs> no baby, uh, all baby daddies and baby mamas are still alive. Nobody died during the taping. There it is. That. We was close. So, Real quick, we got to go to break, guys. When we come back on the other side, we're going to give you uh, numbers three through seven on how to recognize when your past is holding you back, but then how to overcome it. And we're going to run down the top eight shows for the St. Louis Hustle podcast on 2000, uh, in 2020. And just remember, y'all made it happen, man. So keep it locked right here. Y'all did that. Hey, good morning, Wealth Champions. Hey, listen, if you want to be financially successful, then you have to do what financially successful people do. And I know there's a few things that all wealthy people have in common. Number one, they understand that building wealth is a team sport. Number two, they understand the power of capitalism and business enterprise. Number three, they love to use systems and leverage. And number four, they all have mentors. My name is H. Cortez, also known as Financial Health Mentor. And for the last five years, I've been helping hardworking Americans get all of these things in place with one single membership. If you want to learn more about that, go to MyPerfectMoneyPlan.com. Again, that's MyPerfectMoneyPlan.com. And you're going to get a team of professionals so you're not building wealth by yourself. You're going to get a system that's going to help you transform your finances and last but not least you're going to get some great mentorship to help you execute 
your game plan. So again, go to myperfectmoneyplan.com and I'll see you on the other side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St. Louis Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Cortez Hustle. That's my girl, Michelle. Hey. And hey, quit moving the camera. Down Sorry. Seven ways to know if your past is holding you back. And at the same time, we're counting down our top 10 highest viewed shows of mm-hmm. 2020. And let me just say this, people. That commercial y'all just saw, that could be your commercial. I'm just saying. It could be yours. And you not only you. get the commercial play during the show, you get a full-on digital marketing package where we're going to help Full you on? and your brand. I'm just saying. Whoa. Get at me if you want to uh, sponsor the show. Make Comment you shiver. Somebody on the team will give you a call. Shelle, what you got next? Well, next, sir, um, in our... Um, Keeping in line with our subject, seven signs that the past is holding you back. Hold it. Yeah, we don't want the past to hold us. Number three, you find yourself in the same kind of work or the same kinds of relationships over and over and over and over and over and over over again. Um, That's a sign. Look for the patterns. I, I will be honest. Uh, again, I'll be trying to point the finger at y'all with all of the stuff I'll be coming up with, but I always wind up getting back at myself and be like, Lord, this is not for me. He'd be like, yes, it is. So if you continue to follow, find yourself in the same relationship, you know what I'm saying? Just a different guy, same relationship, different person. It might not be them. You break up for the same reason. Might not be them. Could be you. Talk to him. I'm just saying. Talk to him. It could be you. I'm just saying. I hope we can still be friends. Uh, It's you, boo. Huh? (laughs) Listen. And if you are a grown A double dollar sign woman or man, still talking about, I just can't find a good man or I can't find a good woman every relationship I am in, it is this. Listen, you. not me. You keep choosing them. <laughs> That's it. You keep. I learned. I used to like bad boys, right? So I learned that quit picking bad boys, and they won't. You won't be in relationships with people who act bad. Duh. You know. Uh, I, I just was. Um, I was going by my curriculum or the, the qualifications that I was going by uh, for dating. It was I was choosing the wrong qualifications, you know, and so that would show up in my dating life over and over again. But I'll be honest, I had to examine myself when I was in relationships that only lasted three months. Clockwork, three foot. You might get four months out of me, and that's because I found something that I like. Um, but three, four months, and then it's I'm bored. On to the next. Three, four months. On to the next. Um, and just for the record, no, I was not giving the cookie to everybody. That, uh, but I just put that out there. But I found myself in a pattern that I was getting bored, and then I would, you know, because I have a great personality. Thank you. And and these people would maybe get emotionally involved, and right when they got emotionally involved, I was like, eh, bow, I'm out. And mm-hmm. and that wasn't. There was something that that clicked in me that was like, what you're doing ain't right. First of all, you're not fulfilling you. And second of all, you hurting people. You know what I'm saying? You leave it behind, just residue and bones, as the song say. And, and so I, 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 just, I had to look at me and say, you know what? I'm not changing. There's something going on in me that needs to change, and I'm not. You know? So self-reflection. And I got self-reflection. For everybody who's in that single life mm-hmm. and they're going through these dating rituals and routines and all of that kind of stuff, what kind of bait are you using? What? Jesus! Listen, man. Jesus. Listen, when you're out to catch Ooh. something, man. you have to use bait. The man. type of bait that you use determines your catch. Listen, when 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 I made my decision to move to Mississippi to find me a wife in 1995, some of you guys heard this story before. I made my decision based on the OJ trial. If he's guilty, I'm staying. If he's not guilty, 
I'm moving to Tupelo and find me a wife. Hilarious. So with that being said, I had made my mind up that I was through running the streets and I'm ready to find me a wife. Right. Aww. That's cool. Some of you guys, when you're not checking the bait that you're using, you use the same old mm. bait you used 20 years ago, but you say you want something different. Right. Mm. Listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, man. You, if, if you're trying to catch you a husband, you got to use husband bait. If you mm. want to catch you a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you use mm. boyfriend or girlfriend bait. You know mm. what boyfriend or girlfriend bait if you're trying to catch a mm. boyfriend or girlfriend, Michelle? I don't know what that is. If I'm trying to catch a girlfriend, then the bait I might use is my car. The mm. bait I might use is my watch. The mm. bait I might use is the way I dress. But you know when you want to catch a wife, the bait you might want to use. Mm. There it is. Uh, say it. Say it. Woo. Y'all say I'm not matching. You trying to catch you a wife, uh, some financial intelligence. You trying to catch mm. you a wife, you might want to use um your real personality and not show up with your representative. I'm just saying, people, I want to help, I want to help y'all today. Right? <laughs> what bait are you using? Now, yes. by all yes, means, indeed. I'm not saying if you still out there playing the field, then use the bait to catch what you want. Right, right. But use the right bait. Look for a wife. There was a lot of bait out there. Mm. And looking for a wife i could readily identify mm. that's boyfriend bait i'm not buying that because i want to be that, oh, that's that's, that's a, a one night stand bait I'm, I'm not i'm tired of being a one night stand i'm not biting that oh that is uh i need a place to stay bait but i'll Woo. never love you i'm not biting that. Mm -mm -mm. I'm for the wife bait thank you god and mm -mm. some of you are looking for a husband or a wife, but you're using girlfriend bait. You're using one night stand bait. You're mm. using, hey, really, I just need a place to stay bait. I don't care who it is. Uh, you got your own place. Mm. I just need a place to stay for the next three, six, nine, 12 months. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Uh, a man or a woman know what they uh, want. They ain't biting that bait. And if you're saying man. you want a husband, then use husband bait. If you're saying you want a wife, then you use wife bait. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm officially off my soapbox, Michelle. Man, because he didn't just read half the dead gum viewing audience and me. I'm sitting here <laughs> like, Lord, what you tell him this morning? Uh, that's between <laughs> us. That was between us. That is, you couldn't have, I feel like I should throw the whole list away. Uh, that that need to be a show, you know. What I'm saying right bait for the right fish, like what you're trying to catch. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to catch, <laughs> you trying to catch uh, 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 AIDS, uh, syphilis, and herpes. They keep using that bait. Oh, yeah, there's a bait for that, Michelle. Oh, there's, there's a bait for that. There's an app for that, and there's a bait for that. But yeah, I'm trying to. Keep... <laughs> <laughs> I cannot, sir. But if you're trying to catch love everlasting, if you're trying to catch a husband, I 100% I agree with that. And you know what? You just really confirm some things for me because I am really at that bubble where, you know, as much as I enjoy being single, I don't. Uh, I am ready to settle down. I am. And I always joke about being single and wanting a husband and all that. OK, I just outed myself that I have on basketball shorts because like now you can see it in the camera. Sorry. Um, anyway, um. You know, from it, that's all y'all need to say. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, it made me just think about, reflect about the bait that I'm using. And you know what? I'm, I'm okay. Uh, not I'm okay, but I uh, I used to use trap house bait, and I was catching niggas from the trap house. Excuse yeah. me, niggas. And uh, so, yeah, now that's not what I want. You know, I'm, I, 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 there's a freedom in Christ that I have now that is is amazing and and if people don't want to hear that you don't want to be around me you know and and i only tend to jail with those who who want to talk about what i want to talk about i refuse to water myself down in 2021 for people that ain't trying to 
feel the things of God. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't perfect. The person ain't got to be perfect. But I know I like talking about God. And I like talking about fellowship and worship and stuff like that. You know, I'm balanced because I talk about other stuff. But I like to talk about those things. And sometimes the people in my circle don't. They don't. They they uh, humor me, but they don't like to talk about it. I like to talk about it. Let's stay on it. Because the more I stay on it, the more it helps me stay reminded and stay guarded. You know, and it helps. And um, it helps build me up. Part of who you are. So. Yeah. You can't. You, another thing. Th this might be another show. You can't bait and switch. Can't get up. Get up. Work, work. Get up. Go. Man. All during, go. Listen. You can't not bring God up all during our dating relationship. I propose we get married. Now all of a sudden, what? I got to be at church every Sunday. Wait a minute. Man. I ain't got nothing there with. I ain't got to do Christ. Listen. Woo, you better what? find out what God they serve. Oh, I love God. <laughs> what God? Who God? Who Christ. Now Man. that we're married, I got to give up football on Sunday. My only time that I get to relax, relate, and release. Yep. And now... You it's want me to every Sunday. Then every other Wednesday, I got to be in Bible study. And because <sighs> you in the choir, we got one car. I got to drive you to. I yep. you, you hear that from me now? You now you pulling the bait and switch. That's a whole bait other switch. Topic, right? That is that's that's you are on fire today. What is it? <laughs> oh, listen, what that was going on? Let's get to these four and let's get okay. our top ten. <laughs> Right, uh, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm you, got, you did uh, that. I, I, just, I just feel, you know, when the spirit moves is what they say. Uh, ah. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. No. Okay. So uh, we're going to hit these next ones super quick. Uh, number four, you're inflexible. Fix yourself. Stretch it out a little bit. Number five, you're afraid of stretching out of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable, that's a problem. If you're like, oh, I'm cool, I could just stay here. That's a problem. You should be uncomfortable when you're uncomfortable. You're growing. Don't lose that. Number six, you're always secretly comparing your current partner to your ex. Stop that. Don't compare. Don't compare yourself to nobody. And don't compare your ex to your current or your current to your ex. Or don't do that. Stay in your lane. What God has for you is for you. You know what I'm saying? You can't look over the gate and be like, oh, this look good. No, it look good in your lane. Stay in it. All right. Number seven. Seven. Uh, you're thinking and your behavior is tainted by past hurt. Hurt people hurt people, people. So if you, I was leaving behind residue and bones, that's because I was hurt and I was determined when nobody else gonna hurt me, I was gonna be the hurt. That ain't right. Sorry, mm -hmm. Lord, I had to stop that. And I did. Thank you, there's a freedom in that. Yeah. Oh my God, whole nother story. Oh, seven, we done. Look at that. We do that so quick. Now we get back to the top 10. Yeah, hurt people hurt people, man. And when you, Never heal from past mm -mm. trauma. Mm. Whether it is a bad relationship, you bring that trauma into a new relationship. You sure do. Whether it's daddy issues, mommy issues, all of those kind of things. You you carry that stuff with you. This is yep. why you have to constantly be working on yourself, right? I want y'all to write this in the comments for me um, because this changed my life. All right. Everywhere you go. I'm a life changer. Everywhere you go, there you are. What? I'm there too? I'm over there too? I'm right there? Everywhere you I go. Keep turning it, I keep turning up everywhere. This, 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 is why, 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 this, is, this is why you got to constantly be working on yourself. Mm, because mm, everywhere mm. you go, there you are. Lord... We Have somehow mercy. think, Michelle, that I'm not going to deal with this past trauma. I'm just going to mm. keep moving forward. Come and on. Move forward right into a situation and mm -hmm. that new situation. There we are. Yep. That, that that's it. That past trauma. <laughs> right there. Right, right there. Right there if, you don't, it, it, so, if, you, if you don't heal the wound, it ain't going to stop bleeding. It that's it. Stop. It might scab over, but as soon as you bump it up against something familiar, it's gonna, it's not, you're gonna poke the scab and it's gonna start bleeding all over again. And you know what I'm saying? It's gonna start coming out and it's gonna start oozing 
And look, yeah, it's, it's going to, yeah, yeah. You got to deal with it yeah. even when it hurts, Michelle. Ooh. This, is the part, this is the part, right? See, if I have an infection in the mm. womb, sometimes the doctor says, hey, listen, brother, your, your, your wound is only two inches, right? right? It's only two inches. And I could put a stitch in it and sew it up real quick, but I see infection growing. So unfortunately, I have to actually cut out the infection and turn yes. this wound from two inches to six inches. It's going to mm. leave a ugly mm. scar, but it you're going to be healed. Yes. And it's going to hurt like hell for you to get this healing. Yep. And people are saying, oh, no, doc, I don't want to hurt like hell. Just put that stitch in it and let me get on out of here. Man, take the scar. Scars are reminders. You know what I'm saying? Scars are reminders of the pain. You don't have to be in pain. I got a lot of scars on me. And I'm not in pain in those areas anymore, but they are reminders of what I don't want to go back to. You and know what I'm saying? Reminders of the healing. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. So there speaking of pain, is. our number eight highest rated show from mm. last year, we did a show on workplace bullies. Mm. Mm. And some mm. of y'all realize that the workplace bully is you. <laughs> right. I mean, if you sit up there thinking, I don't know nobody in the workplace that bullied me. You the bully. It's you, boo. You're the bully. If people just seem to do what you want them to do when you ain't the boss, you're the bully. Uh, you know what I'm saying? People bring seven. you lunch every day. You're the bully. Yeah. yeah. Number seven, highest rated show. In the same mm. we preach it was a fun one. Yeah. Hanging in with us. We got to get something yes. for my man, John L at Integrity Wealth Solution. He is got faithful, to. man. Man, uh, he so is. So, so Shout out. Let's get something for uh, my man, John L. Number seven, we did a show on family secrets. That was um, a fun show. That was. Um, and I got a quick story on that, Michelle. This is not a family secret, but COVID made me reevaluate my whole life. <laughs> my whole okay. life. Like, okay. Dude, are you really building the legacy that you want to build? And wow, that evaluation, yeah. what I come to realize is, Michelle, mm. I have not been the best husband, brother, cousin, uncle, nephew, friend, business owner, business partner, um, marketing coach, business coach that I could be. Mm -hmm. And I changed it. And well, I called know. my brother yesterday. I called mm -hmm. my sis, both of all three of my sisters yesterday. And when I talked to my brother, the way I was talking, I was like, dude, you all right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Because when, 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 when you really, and I pray that all of y'all get to this place, when you really get to this place, like, listen, I want to give my folks their flowers. Wow, I want everybody to know I appreciate them. I want everybody to know I love them. I want to let everybody know that I am here for yep. you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. I had to say, dude, everything good. <laughs> right? You okay? Listen, What's going? Send me these to me. Listen, matter of fact, everything is so good. I want to mm -hmm. make sure that I do this before things go wrong. There it is. Because now. You could potentially question my motives mm -hmm. if I'm on my deathbed telling you how much I love you. That's it. Right? That's it. So I don't want to wait it. till that happens because there's no question about my motive. If I'm in my right mind, I'm fully healthy and I want you to know I appreciate you. Michelle, I appreciate you. I want you oh. to know that. Brother, 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 you. brother. Right? Man. You didn't have to say yes to be my co-host. Right? <laughs> so... Family secret Man. was a good show for us. Man, you can't uh, do that and then just try to move on. I'm going to give them number six easy. and then I'll let you do the last five. Uh, number okay. six was how to make relationships work. And y'all just got the 2021 version of that right now. Uh, right. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> give people their flowers right now. Y'all know I said that on my birthday. And, and I appreciate 
you as well, you know, I like to tell you publicly because I think you and your wife, you guys are amazing people. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you for being obedient to God when he put you, put me on your heart to say, hey, Shell, it was divine. And I've shared this with you before, but before you asked me, we were making declarations at church. And I said, Lord, my declaration for 2020 is I want to continue to be an influence in Christian media. And then here you come a few weeks later and say, hey, she, I got this opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate appreciate you and your patience um, with me because, you know, sometimes the ratchet is, you know what I'm saying? You are one of the most stand up professional people that I know. And, you know, here I am. Um, with the t-shirt and the guy from the, from the waist up, but yeah, you see the basketball shorts. This is stuff going on. I need to work on, but I appreciate your patience and that you had, God gave you eyes to see what he's doing in me. Yeah. Very few people have those eyes and, and you have them. So I'm grateful for that. So, all right. So our number five, uh, show that, uh, for 2020, one of our most popular ones, I'm surprised it just ranked number five. Cause we really did this by numbers. How many people did these videos reach? And so mommy, we did two shows it was a two part series. We did on mommy and daddy issues, right? One for men, one for women. And we know that both, uh, men and women can have both issues, but, that show, those two shows were just phenomenal. People got a chance to air some stuff out. Um, it, it was therapeutic. It was great. So uh, number four, amplifying the voices of women. Oh, my God. That was we had a special guest on. And please forgive me. I don't remember the young lady's name. Do you remember her name by chance? I do not. The whole South girl, uh, but she was amazing in helping. Um, you know, she was an entrepreneur, and she did a lot of things to give back to the female community and helping other women in business, um, yeah. just so that our voices are heard uh, in a male-driven society. You know, uh, next one that ranked pretty high was uh, number three: adult children living at home. Woo! I did a number on that one. Y'all know my kids was like, you ain't even had to put us out like that. You didn't have to do that on the show. I did it, and I don't do it again. That's, that's, that's so, why they got back at Christmas, and y'all they ready did. to go. It's like, yeah, we ain't forgot. <laughs> <laughs> right. They do. They was like, yeah, we have not forgot. Um, number uh, three. No, that was number three. Number two, which really surprised me, but people kind of mm -hmm. had something to say about this. Loving a narcissist. Man, we love who we love in our lives, but sometimes there are people in our lives that love themselves more than they would love anybody else ever. And yeah. um, there are a lot of people out there who deal with narcissist people and, and don't know how to either get out of the relationship or if they don't want to let go of the relationship, they want to know, they wanted to know how to cope and stay in it without killing somebody and going to jail. Right. So, right. Uh, want to jail if I don't figure out how to deal with this guy. Uh, somebody and, had that. And either I'm going to kill him. Or in my attempt to kill him, he's going to turn around and kill me because he loves it, himself too much to let somebody kill him. <laughs> too much. Too much. You heard me? Too much. Um, and if you think that's not you, it probably is you. So, okay. And the number one show we got the most ratings on was the um, show that we actually just did with uh, AG Tattoo Overcoming Trauma. That was the number one show of all of 2020. We had the most reaches on that show. And, um, you know, AG is a, is a, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a cool word to call him. I was going to say wonderful, delightful young man, but that's not cool. Uh, oh, he a G. That's it. He a G. He's a G. And uh, he had a. For AG. What's that? I would give this word to a few people in my life so far. Uh -huh. AG is what you call swagadocious. Swag is off the charts. He really uh, is. So like, he, is, he really he is. is. My swagadocious award for 2020. Man, that dude, despite the adversity, he yeah. done been the hill and back, burnt over 60% of his body from the head down. And, yep. and that's when you know you swagged out is when you can suffer trauma like that to your head and face and you come out of it, you still alive, you still doing what you used to do and you still fly like he's still a handsome dude yep. despite that. So his, his thing, his handsomeness radiates from the inside. inside you know what I'm saying? So yep. he is one of those rare people that it's not his looks that make him fine. It's his attitude and the way he carries himself. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So 
hey man, shout out to, to AG Tattoo. Um, he did my tattoo. What my good tattoo? There it is. He did my tattoo for me. I'm going back to get another one. My daughter got addicted. She got a dag up near a whole sleeve on one side. I'm like, you sit down somewhere. So uh shout out to AG Tattoo well, well, and Miss Crystal. Well, AG makes it easy, right? Yeah, he do. I ain't easy. flinch, right? I mean, two hours. Shoot, he, he and he can do a lot in two hours. So <laughs> yeah, he, he has amazing easy. prices. If you're looking for great tattoo prices, this dude does two hour service for a hundred dollars. And if he does three tattoos in an hour, still a hundred. If he does one nice big size, because this is a nice size tattoo, a hundred dollars. You can't beat those prices. And if you want something bigger, he'll do three hours for two hundred dollars. You can't beat that. You know what I'm saying? He's an amazing artist. He ain't no, no, no uh, tinsel tracing. Uh, no, no, no. He's a real he's deal a because he draw free. Oh, as you call him, he's not a tattoo tracer. He's, he's not a tattoo, tattoo tracer. Tracing. Exactly. So that's our our top ten shows, and we appreciate you guys. Uh, as my as my uh, buddy would say, mash the share button. Yes. Make sure you like us on YouTube. Yes. Follow yes. us on YouTube. Yeah, you gotta huh? smash it. Oh, I thought you. You can't just push the button. No, you got to smash that mug. Smash the button, the share button. Share us with your, with your family, friends. Real quick, I'm going to say this in party. Uh, you were talking about giving people their roses while they're here, blah, blah, blah. I am. Uh, I stepped out on faith, and, and I am looking for um, a brother that I've never met. I have a brother from my mother, which that was my brother. But I have a brother from my father's side that I've never met, and he's here in St. Louis. And his name is uh, Craig Allen Thompson. And I think he's in his maybe early 60s. His birthday is December 22nd. And I'm looking for him, you know, because I've never met him. And, and he's my brother. We got the same dad. So I don't want him from him. I just want to meet him, you know. And then also have an, a nephew from my brother, from my mother's side, that I haven't seen since he was maybe about three years old. I think I was about 10 or 11 and he was three. And um, we were supposed to raise him at one point, And that didn't work out. And he is named after my brother. His name is George, uh, George L. Davis. And he's in the California area. And um, he will probably be in his early 40s by now. Um, yeah, so his, his dad's name was, was George uh, Davis. His name is George L. Davis. His mother's name was Regina. I don't know if she's still living or not. But again, for some reason, God put it on my heart to connect with these two. And um, I don't know why. So I don't know what God is doing. I'm just trying to be obedient. So um, there's a post out there on my page. Like and share the post because you just don't know what you know. So Listen, there it is. You will give a little effort to this. If you guys don't understand something called the six degrees of separation, watch this. Michelle, somebody, and matter of fact, not somebody, everybody watching this show right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. is six degrees away from both of those people. That means they wow. know somebody, that's one, who right. knows somebody, that's two, who knows somebody, that's three, who knows somebody that's four, gotcha. who knows somebody that's five, who knows somebody that's six, who wow. knows them. Wow. Wow. And they, right, well. they start inquiring. Yeah. And I might ask you, Michelle, you know, so-and-so, you say, I've heard that name before. I don't really yeah. know. I, don't I know that person. But you know what? Let me ask. Melissa. So and so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that, yeah. That, that person. I don't have a number for him, but let me connect you with uh Janelle. Yeah. Janelle, oh, you know what? Not only do I know him, that's my thing, Yeah, but, yeah. Because I actually here's right thing. Here. Let me, here's the thing. My nephew actually works uh somewhere in I think he's in somewhere in California, Los Angeles or Chino, somewhere I got I was just doing some stuff on um, research on Facebook, but I think I found him. But I want somebody to put the word out because I'm not the one because I don't know what he's been told about his father. He hadn't seen his father. Um, it wasn't a relationship there. So I don't know what he's been told about his father. So I don't want to go knocking on his door. He's been told that we is horrible people. We're not. I just want to connect. But I, I believe if this is the right guy, he's doing television as well. He's doing podcasting as well. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. yeah. Let me encourage you in this. Mm -hmm. God put it on your heart to reach out to them. Go knock on that man door. 
Don't you sit up here and say, God, put it on my heart. And then. But you can't say God put it on my heart and follow it with a but. Because that cancels out everything I just said. <laughs> um, remember that from school. Uh, you're you right. You're right. Because there, there was a fear. Door and say, hey, this is Michelle. I don't know if you remember me. I but I don't know that it's him. And then let God do the rest. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, okay. We've been to church. We've been right. relationship counseling. We have. We did a lot this hour. We, we've been around the world <sighs> and back on this show. We appreciate all of you guys for tuning yeah. in. And we do. You guys, next time we want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. You can. You can do it. More importantly, you deserve to do it. Each and every single one of you. Now hustle up.